tradition was that you'd actually put a little silver sixpence into the mix and the person that found it on Christmas Day was the lucky one. Or they choked on it. Winston? Winston? Come back with that leg of lamb. Oh, bring us some figgy pudding. Oh, bring us some figgy pudding. Oh, bring us some figgy... They sing about it, you know, the carol singers in the songs, but what is a figgy pudding? I'm going to tell you, but not only tell you, I'm going to share with you the royal recipe that I made at Buckingham Palace for figgy pudding. I made it for the Queen and Prince Charles, King Charles loved it too, and he liked it cold. It actually dates back to medieval times, medieval England, and the recipe was a way of preserving sweetmeats. Sweetmeats were, in Victorian times and earlier, uh, any type of dried fruit. These were all sweetmeats. Now, you may be religious or you may not, but this is fascinating. The recipe's got 13 ingredients which represent Jesus and each of the 12 apostles. And the sprig of holly that goes on top represents the crown of thorns. Let's get this thing mixing because it takes two hours to steam and all the fruits need to be rehydrated into the alcohol first before we can start the pudding. I've put the recipe, the royal recipe, the recipe they make at Buckingham Palace in the description below so you can make it too if you want to. I'm rehydrating all the dried fruit here and I've got raisins and sultanas and I've got orange juice and I've got rum and I've got brandy and I've got beer in there and it smells absolutely gorgeous. I let that rehydrate for a while and then we start mixing everything together. Families would gather weeks before Christmas to make their own Christmas pudding. In fact, five weeks before Christmas, it was known as Stir Up Sunday. Stir Up Sunday! All the families would come together and just stir the Christmas pudding because they believed that it would bring them good luck the following year. Even the royal family took part in Stir Up Sunday. Look! Now we can start adding all of the ingredients together into one big bowl. The dry ingredients first. I have some breadcrumbs. I have some suet. Suet's really hard to find. I put a link in the description below so you can find it. Some brown sugar. Flour. Spice, of course. And egg. Then I'm going to stir in my fruit. Few people nowadays make their own from scratch. You know, they'll go and buy one instead. It's so much easier, I guess, to buy one. But it's well worth the effort. And the royal chefs at the palace used to love when it came to making the Christmas pudding. I've cut this recipe down so it just makes a little small four portion one. I mean, that alone takes two hours to steam. When we were making them at the palace, we had to steam for 11 hours. Can you imagine how much we made? Once it's all been stirred together and all the family have been and had a stir and made a wish, then you can put it into the mold. Tradition was that you'd actually put a little silver sixpence into the mix and the person that found it on Christmas Day was the lucky one. Or they choked on it. Anyway, at the palace we didn't put a sixpence in there. So fill it to the top and then just flatten it out. 
It's not going to rise or anything. There's no raising agent in there. In fact, it's actually going to sink a little. Then we'll take some parchment paper and put that over the top. And some foil. It's then going to go into the steamer for two hours. Once it's steamed for two hours, then we can take it out and turn it out onto a plate. At the palace, we turn it out into plastic wrap, let them cool down, put them in the refrigerator, and we'd refrigerate them for up to a year. And then we'd take them out for Christmas and for New Year. We'd use them at Balmoral in the summer. Prince Charles loves Christmas pudding, but he actually likes it sliced cold into little fingers, and he'd take it on picnics with him. Look at that. Smells absolutely gorgeous. Just before going into the royal dining room, we'd pour some brandy over the top and light it. And the palace steward would carry it into the royal dining room. Christmas pudding, plum pudding, figgy pudding, call it whatever you want, but make one. The recipe's in the description below. In fact, make two, because the carol singers might come knocking and want some. Oh, give us some figgy pudding. <laughs> See you again soon.